Yeah, the drinking was funny. I, I was thinking about it in the movie that this must be the highest functioning alcoholic that I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's uh, this great crisis going on and he's, he just drinks every day, yeah. apparently. Yeah, yeah it was, it, and, it uh, was cr crazy. Yeah. It, it really was crazy. It was like, it was like a, a, a bottle of scotch a day and two, yeah. two, or two to four bottles of champagne a day <laughs> and then the cigars and yeah. then the, 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 the food, which is quintessentially also British and yeah. horrible, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> but, but, you know, yeah. uh, eggs and, 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 and fried sausages, sausages and, and, yeah. and beans and stuff yeah. like that. And so, so it is crazy. Mm. Uh, and, and he must have been, I mean, he must have been drunk all the time. Yeah. You have to be yeah. drunk all the time, even if you... Even if you drink like sips throughout the day, mm. getting through four, I mean, four bottles of champagne is like three liters yeah. of champagne but plus that, the scotch. I mean, I, I remember reading an interview or some sort of a news or whatever, maybe it was on social media when Lemmy was still alive. And apparently he had visited a doctor who had told him that just keep drinking Lemmy because otherwise you're going to go into some sort of an organ shutdown because basically his body is so attuned to the amounts of alcohol that he's consuming that is sort of keeping him <laughs> sort of alive in a way. And yeah. I've heard stories about smoking cigarettes that people who are really old that they shouldn't stop smoking because if they stop smoking their body will start to you know try to purify it yeah. itself and then they'll probably die because they're so old they can't handle it. Yeah. And I think, I don't know if he was drunk all the time, but maybe it was sort of like this maintenance of a normal yeah. state of being and probably then wandering into the drunken areas occasionally. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's weird. But with all sort of due reverence towards Lemmy, mm. I wouldn't have wanted Lemmy to be the prime minister <laughs> of Britain yeah. during, That's a good during, point. Yeah. That during the good Second point. World yeah. War. But yeah. I think that, that a part of that has also, I mean, because the... The position that he was put in mm. was so difficult. No, it was. I mean, he, he, everybody basically disliked him. Mm. And he's thrown into this situation, which at the time looked like it was going to go really, really badly. Yeah. And, and I sort of felt that in a way he was this kind of sacrific sacrificial lamb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, they thought that they give him this job that nobody that nobody's gonna uh, that we're gonna we're gonna lose yeah. we're gonna lose anyway and then we can blame this guy. Mm. Um, I don't know that I, I don't know how it actually went, but this was how the sort of film painted it. And I think that being drunk all the time maybe helped must have, a bit. Must, have yeah. must have helped. because yeah. because then you sort of. Feel don't a bit freak more out all the time. Than yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it was astonishing. I mean, and this is the problem, of course, with uh, movies that depict historical events because I like them a lot. But the problem is that is this fictionalized, yeah. or is this an actual thing that happened? Because it really seemed like an impossible situation because yeah. they were sort of realistically facing either defeat or surrender. Yeah. And then this sort of a long shot option of maybe getting a small part of their troops home yeah. from Dunkirk. Yeah, and ultimately, I think that I think that they would have, I think that they would have lost. I mean, most mm. historians agree that they would have lost if 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 the Japanese hadn't invaded Pearl mm. Harbor, yeah. because then finally the Americans took an interest yeah. and brought their sort of yeah. huge firepower over mm. to Europe. I think the British might have been able to sort of hold off mm, for a on while. the island yeah. for a while. But if they'd started to hammer them with with the French Air Force and, yeah, and, and the Navy know. and so on. Yeah, and it's a weird, when you think about it, if the United States hadn't intervened at all, I mean, eventually Hitler would have gotten an atomic bomb yeah. So that's a game changer, naturally. And then um, it's kind of weird when you think about Second World War, about the mistakes that, uh, you know, Hitler and company made. Mm -hmm. One of being Pearl Harbor, the second being trying to invade Russia mm -hmm. while fighting on multiple fronts at the same time. 
So it's yeah. sort of like, um, it is our blessing that they were kind of stupid. And there's this yeah. one argument that is sort of beside the point of this movie, but um, that if Hitler had been smarter, he wouldn't have started exterminating Jews so early. Because they, because many of the most brilliant scientists in Germany were Jews. Yeah. So it would have been smart to just keep them on board of this war effort and then, you know, use their intelligence to further their cause. Yeah. But yeah, but um, in terms of surviving, surviving Dunkirk, it's also one of the things that was sort of clear in the movie is also this this battle between Hitler and Churchill as mm. orators, yeah. as speech makers, mm. and 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 the ability, the, the really sort of the pen is mightier than the sword yeah. kind of idea about about because because there's no, no there's no question, and I don't think that the film really shied away from it, but it did it did sort of make me think afterwards about it that that how much of a warmonger mm. Churchill was yeah. because he'd been. He'd had that defeat in Gallipoli, yeah. and there had been, and he was a Boer War veteran yeah. himself. Uh, that there seemed to be something inherent either in his character or just you know nagging him in the back of his head yeah. that, that he has to win, and this this um, reluctance or or denial of any kind of peace talks mm. really nowadays when you think about mm. it like that is not really the mark of of a person who who's on the way to lasting world peace or stuff like that yeah that it's 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 not really um it's not really a characteristic that i look up to mm. in a lot of people that 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 you have to just you know you have to win and you have to Destroy, <laughs> destroy the enemy. Yeah, but it, it, when you think about the situation that he was in, and you basically seeing that all of Western Europe has been conquered by this tyrannical force. Yeah. And then you have the option of either surrendering, and probably it, it is well put in the film. What oh, I think it was Churchill actually, or, or Gary Oldman who said it in the film about. Uh, what the surrendering would mean that uh, you know like the the swastika flags on the on Westminster and everywhere else though. so it's basically a total subjugation to Nazi Germany so basically it was a really bad option also yeah it so is it, a bad is it, it is a bad option but it's still um you stay alive yeah it's it's yeah. it's survival it is and at at some point because you don't know, you haven't got the benefit of hindsight, mm. and you and there's also the the, the thing that now if that they had lost all, of, if they had actually, if, if the war hadn't gone their way, because you mentioned the word hindsight, yeah. and it's true, if the war hadn't gone their way, it would be a different history of yeah. that those events that led to England or Great Britain actually fighting again, you no know, continuing to fight against Nazi yeah. Germany. Yeah, but it's. It is, and it would have changed. Well, it would have changed global history. Mm, true. Uh, I mean, of course, European history would have been at its center, but it, it would have rippled so far yeah. everywhere. Because at the time, there were a lot of colonies in Africa. Yeah. There were a lot of colonies in in Asia, and and it would have been. If Great Britain had been invaded and it had been conquered, mm. I don't know what their relationship with the United States would be today, because no. now they are the link that mm. that sort of bridges over the Atlantic. That's true. Um, and how much of that has to do with the events of the Second World War? Yeah. And of course, the fact that you know. Um, um, United States is was a part of Great Britain also, and then they gained yeah. independence. And it's a long history, really. Yeah. But um. Yeah, you mentioned the um, 
the orating skills of uh, Churchill, and it is uh, it was a it was a cool phrase that uh, Halifax, Vice Count Halifax, used uh, about Churchill during the when the when his uh, speech at the is it a Congress or something like that had finished. He mobilized the English language. Yeah, and it's it's a good good way to describe it. Yeah. That he was really so good at using the language that is sort of um, it was intelligent and um, emotional and uh, it was really everything a good speech should be. Yeah, but it's interesting that that's never been done. I mean, it, it is a sensitive subject, but it, especially in this movie, it would have been interesting to see because Hitler's speeches are all always there's there's always an element of caricature. There's well, always there's always this small, stupidly mustachioed guy no, shouting, yelling, yeah, shouting yeah. into the microphone and gesturing wildly. Du, meine Arbeit für richtig hältst, ob du glaubst, dass ich fleißig gewesen bin, dass ich gearbeitet habe, dass ich mich in diesen Jahren für dich eingesetzt habe, dass ich anständig meine Zeit verwendet habe im Dienste meines Volkes. Gib du jetzt deine Stimme ab, wenn ja! And Hitler was also a really, really good speaker, mm. but you never get a feeling of that because it seems like this cartoon clown, this this yeah. this chaplain mm. character. Basically, yeah. yeah. And and here when there's this juxtaposition between the two, it would mm. have been interesting to have some of Hitler's speech speeches also translated mm. just to see that sort of war, war that was going yeah. on because now again it was sort of dismissed as and I know it's it's difficult you do if you if you if you sort of put your hands in that hornet's nest it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's it might be a really really bad move but in just in terms of how the di and dynamics of the movie uh, were it would have been I think it would have been interesting. It would have been because they were really the great public speakers of that era. Yeah. I mean, and Hitler, say what you want about the man, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but he he was probably pretty good at you know um, engaging with a crowd or yeah. riling them up or making them feel things and stuff yeah. like that. So which is which, really, which is difficult, especially yeah, is. with Germans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. True. <laughs> um, yeah.